My fellow weaves, we finally know this is what an anime girl would look like in real life. Hello people of YouTube and welcome to another review from the Spike Head Podcast where today we will be looking at Alita which is based off a manga series and two part OVA directed by Robert Rodriguez starring Rosa Salazar, Ed Skirin, Mahershala Ali and Christoph Waltz. This is about Dr. Idu and Alita. Dr. Idu is collecting scrap parts in a big scrap pile where he finds the head and core of Alita's conscious, so he gives her this cybernetic body because Alita is a cyborg and Alita is trying to remember who she is all the while she finds out that she does not dodge combat in any sense of the word anytime something dangerous is coming she is ready to fight it by pure instinct so we know there's something mysterious about her past that she is trying to figure out all the while this world is basically a little city below a floating city called Salem and that is run by an evil corporation as all films like this do and they basically rule over this lower land world and Alita is trying to help her friend Hugo who she eventually falls in love with get up to Salem which seems to be the dream for everyone because it seems to be the jump between lower class and higher upper class. Now I didn't see the OVA until after I saw the film and I will say this film does a pretty good job of adapting it. I do like what James Cameron has done in his writing to adapt a anime that is not widely known, it's never I never heard of before. It's one of those cyberpunk animes and mangas that came out the year after Ghost in the Shell, so it did come out at a quite a bad time considering on how iconic Ghost in the Shell got. What a difference that a year makes, eh? So, did the risk work? Do we actually have a good live-action anime adaptation due to the fact that not many people know about this particular anime? Well, it's a mixed bag, I will say so the least. First off, big positives to the action set pieces. There is a sport in this called Motorball, which is basically like Robo Derby with a ball and some cyborgs and it's very aggressive and very brutal. And people are getting decapitated, but because all they need is their head and their spine to basically be a core for a cyborg body, they can be torn to shreds and be perfectly fine, which I find really good. There's just a lot of flowing, long one-shots in these action set pieces. When Alita is going full Battle Angel mode, like the title suggests, these are very good action sequences, and I enjoy them to no end. And it's great to see that the camera actually tries to keep everything in frame. It's not shaky. It seems like the Transformers shaky cam of old has finally gone from any sort of action film and a lot of action films are now focusing on these long shots that encompass the entire frame. I also love Alita's character. She is basically a shy, timid child at the start of it, but when she learns to embrace her battle angel side of herself and has a drive to figure out who she is, she is brilliant. I particularly like a scene where she is squaring up to some rough people at this bar. Another note is that she becomes a hunter warrior, which is like a bounty hunter in this world that replaced the police force. She signs up to be one of those and she goes to this bar and just starts smack talking all these hunt warriors because all these are like big scarred men or just rough looking women. Elite is a tiny little thing so naturally everyone's laughing at there and she's just sassing them out and challenging them. I love that aspect to her character. There's a certain part of her character that I don't like but after watching the OVA I can give it a bit more and that's her how quick she is to be romantically involved with someone. That is something that I will cover more in my negative section. But after watching the OVA, it looks like that happens very quickly anyway. It's just like a key point in the story. So that I can forgive, but her personality, her drive and her awkwardness are fantastic. And I do love what badass she does come later on. The blood on the face from the poster. Trust me, that scene is badass and heartbreaking. As I said, this is based off a manga, and the film does try very hard to recreate a number of shots from the anime and manga. Literally, there are some frames when I'm watching the OVA, they do actually copy them almost beat by beat. And the layout and the setting is almost perfect as well. Salem actually looks like it does in the anime section. And so does Alita's look and how some of these cyborgs look. It looks really good on how they've managed to adapt these sequences so i would say as an adaptation it does a really good job now i need to read the manga still but from just watching the ova and this film they've done a really good job obviously they hollywoodize it just a little bit but it's fine as what it is in my personal opinion 
Also, the film does end on a great cliffhanger. Now, the OVA ends at the point this film does, but the OVA ends and doesn't feel there's any need for it to continue. Whereas this film has its big bad that you never really see, and the ending and the way it holds a cliffhanger at the end is really good. And I do want to see more of this world. I want to see this world more developed. And I do want to see a sequel to this, but I'm not sure how well it is doing at the box office at the moment. I'm hoping it is doing okay, but... If we don't get a sequel, that's fine, but I would really like one. But like I said, there are problems with this, and these are terrible problems. For one, the character love interest, Hugo, is a terrible love interest and a terrible character. I had no sympathy for him whatsoever. You know a love interest is bad when I am wanting this character to die for a good portion of the film. Now, Hugo's a lot more malicious in the OVA. Like he rips out people's spines to get parts in the original OVA. This one, they adapt that story, Fred, and I mean, it's a bit spoilery, but you would, you'll would see it coming a mile away. I guarantee you will see the whole thing coming a cosmic mile away. But anyway, the way they try to justify things he does and how they try and make him sympathetic and meaningful, all he does is do a goofy, adorable smile to Alita half the time. And his facial expression never really changes, and it really is a frustrating character to watch. Like, the only time he shows any sort of range is towards the end of the film, and even then, it was just, I hadn't, I stopped caring about that point. Pick your love interest better, because seeing Alita be this badass in one scene, then the very next scene, she's pulling out her heart, saying, I'll give you my heart. No, Alita has become one of the most badass characters I've seen in the last couple of years in cinema, and we have to tie down with this puppy boy romance, which is really frustrating. And speaking of the Hugo, he's in this little gang, and there is no depth for them at all. There's this Asian girl you see, but you never get to know her name. There's a guy with an afro that is not a fan of Alita, but he's never given any depth. And his arc ends rather abruptly with no sense of feeling to it at all. And that is something that really lets this film down a bit. Outside of Alita, Edo, and Mahershali's character. In fact, even that guy didn't get much depth. It's only really Alita and Edo and Hugo that get any sort of depth. And Hugo's depth didn't work at all. There are a couple of other characters that show up. But they are all very one note in what they're doing. Nova, the big bad that we hardly see in this film, he delivers more of a personality than half the characters in this film. And he's just there mentally taking over people's bodies rather than being there physically. That's how poorly written this was at times. And that's something James Cameron's not been the best at. He's a great director, but writing-wise, he cannot write romance to save his life. No matter how many the dialogue for Avatar was, romance-wise. And... So many dialogue exchanges between people. I don't know, James Cameron just doesn't really flesh out his cards as much. He's more of a visual storyteller rather than a narrative storyteller. And that is really a shame because this is an anime adaptation. Anime is predominantly character building. I can forgive exposition in these sorts of films because in anime they do that a lot. But this, no. This film also crammed in two OVAs. It was a two-part OVA. But granted, both of them are half hour long in this film adds padding and stretches things out but with how much they stretch out the OVA 1 and OVA 2 it just feels like this film could have been split into two parts because he was that term to throw padding onto it literally the point at the, where the OVA the first OVA would have ended it felt like the end of the film I felt it was just about to wind down and go into a sequel but no the film keeps going and it keeps going and keeps going it gets really frustrating because there's like three different climaxes throughout this film and it really is one of those things that really lets the pacing of this film down quite a bit. Finally, in terms of big bads, there isn't really a big bad in this. Mahesh Ali's character is supposed to be the lower down bad guy. Because Noah's supposed to be the big one, but he's not in this very much. And Mahesh Ali's character is ruling the lower part of this world. He never feels like a big bad. He spends half his time being manga trolled by Nova and then being mocked by his associate. There is very little that it does actually do in this film, which I really found irritating. I found it hard to really get behind Alita because she wasn't really going towards anything. I didn't even know that Alita knew he existed until towards the end. So that was a bit of a letdown in my opinion because every film needs a very good bad guy. And this bad guy felt very lackluster, if I do say so myself. Four months rise, Rosa Salazar is brilliant as Alita. Apart from the times where she's all lovey-dovey into Hugo... Her badass scenes and her sensitive and adorable scenes are really well done. I can't really see her in more films because she sells Alita's journey perfectly throughout the film. 
Christoph Waltz is a very good father figure for Alita as Edo. I wish we did get more of him as a hunter warrior, but as a father figure to Alita, I thought he did a fantastic job at this. Mahershali, like I said, I wish this character could have done a bit more. I feel bad for him because he's a great actor, but all he got to do really was basically be a skinny Morpheus, and Morpheus was evil. That's literally all this character really does in this film. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez, she is good for the small bits we see in it. You can tell that her character and Alita have a strong bond together. And I do hope we get more of that fleshed out in a sequel, potentially. And finally, Ed Skirin, he is really good as this cocky, smarmy villain. His British accent really helps carry it through a lot. This is the same guy that acted as Francis in Deadpool. So, picture him, but imagine him smiling a lot and gloating and having a sword and a cyborg body and being a little pretty boy. That is basically his character and it's fantastic to watch. Overall, Elite Battle Angel, while I do want to say it is a good anime adaptation, but it does do quite a bit good from the original OVAs. It felt overstuffed to hell and the romance plot was terrible and the Hugo character was poorly adapted in my personal opinion. So as much as I love the action sequence, especially the motorball and some of these shocking things that take straight from the anime that wouldn't normally be in this kind of film. I felt this film could have done a bit more and I don't think they would make a sequel out of it. I'm going to have to read the manga to see where it went after this because this film I enjoyed it, but as a film critic, as someone that looks at our films as a whole, and not just on my own enjoyment, but as how it's made and how it's structured, the fact it's crammed two OVAs that both have a start, middle, and end in it individually makes this film feel like it has three endings, which really looks to grade down for me. And I'm going to have to say that Alita Battle Angel just has too much milk. So Alita Battle Angel, have you all seen it? If you have, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. If you like what I do on this channel, feel free to hit that round subscribe button and see my latest videos over here. Guys, I hope you all have a wonderful day. This is that Spikehead Podcast, signing off.